Hey guys, we are so excited to finally be in our kitchen. Today we're actually going to be cooking and showing you guys how to make authentic Korean kimchi. Kimchi is one of those vegetable side dish ingredients that is such a staple to Korea, Korean culture, Korean people. I feel like there is not a meal that you can't add kimchi to and just make it so much better. I love kimchi. Ben, my husband, he also adores kimchi. This is the first time I'm making kimchi and so we're really excited because we actually have a special guest. All the way from- Are you Atlanta? in Atlanta? Atlanta right? I'm in Atlanta, yes. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> we are so excited to be joined by my onni, Tunghi. She's also known as Korean Fusion. She's an incredible, incredible, incredible Korean cooking mastermind. You have a whole list of credentials that we didn't even realize, <laughs> right? It's like in the inside, we have her cookbook. We had it already and everything we've cooked from it has been absolutely amazing. Literally on the inside, it talks about how you studied all of this really impressive stuff with like Korean cuisine. Yes, I was trained in Korean royal cuisine, so royal court cuisine back in the day for the Korean king, all the other people who serves the king. So all the recipes are written for 200 people. And I was part wow. of the <laughs> that changed 200 people worth of uh, recipe into for a family of four. Not only is she amazing at Korean cooking, this is going to be some royal kimchi. <laughs> Korean court level kimchi, okay? <laughs> if you guys are ready, we are going to start with making the gravy. Bring out the kelp broth that we soaked. We had this pre-soaked. So this is like not in my book. This is one of the perks of taking cooking class with me, right? Because you get all the secrets. So if you soak the kelp in water for about 24 hours, you get all the deliciousness out without having any bitterness if you were to boil. So I love using this method. Let's have you guys grab a pot that would fit about a cup and a half of that broth liquid. Hey, got the measuring cup. So yes. cup and a half of this seaweed soaked water. Yes. Awesome. And into the pot, measure two tablespoons of the rice flour, the glutinous rice flour, which is also known as sweet rice. Koreans make rice cakes with them. Put two tablespoons, put it straight into the liquid. And Jen, um, grab a whisk. Just whisk it. So keep whisking. And then uh, once it's all incorporated, turn the heat on. Basically bring it to boil as we whisk. And as the water gets hot, you will notice that it'll thicken like glue. Having this carbohydrate starter makes it super tasty when it's fermented. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> is the cabbage. So this is the kind of cabbage that we're going to be using. Napa cabbage. Napa cabbage. This is a little one, but we, we actually got a really big one pre-cut. This is a displayed Napa cabbage. Awesome. So what you're going to do is grab a knife and then I'm going to cut the bottom. And I use this to make vegetable broth. Then let the leaves loose. And we're gonna stack them like little cards, like deck of cards. I feel like Ben is a lot more skilled at cutting than I am. But it, that's the whole point. We want you to do it. <laughs> He's the cook in our family. Even the Korean food, he learned to cook it all. <laughs> that's amazing. I wish I could say I was the, the Korean chef of the family, but I am the Korean and Ben is the <laughs> Korean chef. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. Pull the leaf off the cabin and stack them. And I'll teach you how to cut this in a most, I guess, safe manner. It's a little flimsy at the top. So what I do is I cut basically the center of it to divide more firm part to flimsy part, separate. So we got the, the yeah. flimsies and the hard parts. Let's start with the hard part. Make sure it's firm on the cutting board and then cut through the center the long way. So you get this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about like an inch long pieces horizontally. I usually get about four pieces out of it. So now we have the right size and then just put it in the container that is going to be salted later. The leafy bits, so the outer leaves are large. So what I do is I do two cuts, one and then two. So now I have three pieces. Just stack them all together and then cut horizontally. I think I can get about three pieces. The flimsy part size doesn't matter as much. 
because after you salt it, it becomes much smaller anyway. So the, the firm part is more important. Actually, I could probably do these a little smaller since we have a little tiny little baby cabbage. It's a bit smaller. You just, you know, use your common sense, bite size. Do remember that because of salting, it is going to shrink. So even uh -huh. if it's a little large right now, it will shrink even more. And you repeat until you don't have any more cabbage left. Keep just cutting the bottom as you tear off the leaves and to save the bottom for future use. I guess the inside trick is that you don't wash the Napa cabbage from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I know I would never have thought that. But because we salt it and we have to rinse it like three times, it really doesn't matter. So you said the end part. What do you do with that? Because so he, yeah. he already chopped yes. off the end. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. The, the okay. whole point is because it's much thinner now, I just mm -hmm. cut it the same width and then just forget about oh. it. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted to show you. That you don't have to cut in half anymore by the time you get there. Now grab water, like a big container to make salt water. Got a bowl. All right. Get one cup of Korean sea salt. And if you're not using Korean sea salt, which is a lot more coarse, you need to reduce the amount of salt. So this is like the brine that the cabbage is going to sit in to try to draw out some of that cabbage water. So my rule of thumb is... I do one cup of Korean sea salt and 10 cups of water, like 110. That's how I remember it. But if you are using kosher salt or anything super fine, start with half cup of salt. And it's okay if it's not completely melted. It eventually does its job. Good job. So we have all the salty water and the cabbage all inside here. We need something heavy to push it down. Volunteering the lid of our Dutch oven as tribute. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and then now the cabbage goes to sleep for two hours. Night night. Bye bye. Night -night. Bye bye. And then the soaked cabbage, we are going to rinse it three times. I assume you guys haven't rinsed it yet, right? We have a giant tub of cabbage that we have already soaked for a couple of hours. It's much larger than the one we just cut up. How should we go about rinsing it? Do we just do this in the sink? Yes. Follow me. <laughs> so it's a two container job so what i do is put more water into the current cabbage situation give it a good rinse make sure all the saltiness comes out and the idea is to do this three times so you take all of the cabbage out and then dump out the water and then rinse it all the way through two more times I don't know why, but that's what my grandmother said I need to do, so <laughs> I don't question her. Once you're done with this, we have to squeeze also. So after three times, grab a handful and then squeeze. But like, don't try to squeeze the life out of it, but squeeze <laughs> enough. <laughs> I also forgot to tell you guys, which is really important, what I call the back bend method. So when do I know cabbage is like ready? You know, it's fully salted because every cabbage is different. You know, summer cabbage, winter cabbage, if you try to bend it backwards. It doesn't snap, right? Like it's like bending. It's good to go. If it, okay. if it breaks and snaps, not ready. Is that after rinsing it that it'll do that or before? Before, before. And then you just try to bend it. And if it bends, like it's good. That's perfect. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, obviously, try to make them together. It snaps. Yeah, he made it touch. All right. So just go ahead and rinse and squeeze. Yeah, you do that. I'll do mine here. Okay. The next step is going to be making the kimchi paste. So you will need whatever is the biggest bowl you have. There you go. Yes. We bought this specifically for this video. <laughs> All Koreans need to have it. Yeah. Oh, she has the same one. <laughs> That's when you know you're Korean. So you need to put the gravy in here. So to the gravy, we are adding one cup of gochugaru, which is a yeah. Korean pepper flake. Flake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Now you need fish sauce and you're going to put half cup of it. We got our fish sauce right here. We have the okay. same brand. Yeah. <laughs> This is really important too because a lot of uh, Vietnamese Thai fish sauce have sugar in it. Nothing wrong with it. It just changes the kimchi texture if there's sugar in the kimchi. So just make sure you read the label uh, and get the ones that's just anchovies and salt. Ooh, stinks. Half cup. Yeah, it definitely has 
an aroma to it. Yeah, it's pungent. But that's what makes it taste good. I read the thing that you said about the fish sauce and I told yes. Jen's mom, I think that kind of blew her mind because she had only ever used three crabs before. Yeah. She was like, oh, I need, I need to go get some new fish sauce. Now you can mix. Just make sure kochukaru is nice and wet. Ooh, that smell. It's really peppery. It's okay. Now we're going to add all the other ingredients. Let's just make sure you have all of them. Um, Korean chives. And I have Minari, which... Did you guys watch the movie Minari? What an amazing movie. Seriously. Are Korean chives different from American chives? I mean, we just have green onions. Oh yeah, green onions are fine. It's an uh, easy substitute. So green onions are totally okay. We have our minari here. <laughs> green onion. <laughs> the radish. You guys have the mu? Our mu. This is a yep. Korean radish. Here you go. Rinse all of that. Um, also grab Korean pear. In its netting. In its home. <laughs> Korean produce. Lovely. Um, and garlic and ginger. We can start putting things into the paste. So, do you have a microplane? Hey, we literally have a microplane right here. Awesome, great. Garlic, I'm gonna microplane it. I say about three tablespoons, which usually yield one, two, three, four, eight cloves of garlic. We love garlic, plenty. And then we're gonna microplane ginger as well as Korean pear. Or if you have a garlic press, you can use a garlic press. If you don't have it, you can use microplane. You can just chop old school with a knife. You know, you'll see a lot of videos that put all the kimchi ingredients in the mixer and like just blitz it. That's what my mom does. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that because of, I guess, my royal court cuisine training. All these vegetables have cell lines that can become bitter when it touches metal for too long. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like the blender. Yep, just go for it. Just straight into the paste. Oh, yeah. yeah, the garlic press method is amazing. It's oh, God's invention. <laughs> My hands are gonna smell amazing. <laughs> so what I do with ginger is instead of cutting the right amount, I like to hold on to it. So I just peel the end that I'm going to grate with microplane. So you see how like I have about an inch long peeled, but the rest is not. And I'm going to use, I'm just gonna grate it straight into the paste. Korean pear. Cut it in half. Oh. Yay! Nice me. <laughs> we have two halves. We're only gonna use one half, and then I'm going to cut the other half into a quarter, and then put the flat side down, and then I cut so that the seeds are gone. <laughs> okay, I got it. And then you're gonna microplane, just microplane over the sauce. And you can use apples instead of pears, doesn't matter. I like pears because it's more original. My mom just made a huge batch of gaktuki last week. Yeah. And she used both. Nice. Okay, so basically Julianne, um, you can use mandolin if you're comfortable. Um, I've lost like a thumb or two with mandolin. So I have like love and hate relationship with it. What I do is I cut off the sides just to make it more rectangular. And like I said, all these scraps make really delicious broth. So just save all of these and make it into like square looking log. Cut into thin slices of squares. About like that big. And then you're gonna stack them up and then slice it into julienne, like little skinny matchsticks. The radishes can go straight into the paste. Oh yeah. <laughs> Happy French fries. Ooh, this is spicy French fries. I have mixed all of the Welcome sauce. Back. Paste, the paste. paste. The paste is pasted. I'm gonna have you grab minari. I love that we don't have to explain what minari is anymore because everybody knows what it is. <laughs> minari. Yay! <laughs> it's this. It's basically Korean watercress. Not everybody can get this from the grocery store. So if you don't have it, you can put chives or green onions. I personally love it. Just cut this in about an inch long length, like about this this big. About this long. It's very Korean measurement. Uh, I think the book says like inch and a half, but I go off of my pinky length. Now the real royal part about using minari, if I really wanted to be anal, 
you need to take up all the leaves and only use the stem. Oh, that's the, that's the royal part right there. But I'm not gonna make you guys go through that right now. We'll just use the more bottom part and leave out the top part. Yeah, we can definitely keep the bottom parts as the goodest parts. And then the top part, these make really good pancakes. Like scallion pancake kind of pancakes? pancakes? Yeah, exactly. Ah. And then just like throw it into the bowl and you don't even have to mix, just like, just, just leave it for now. And then grab your y'all's uh, scallion or green onions cut it maybe the half length of the minari and just the green parts and then dump it into the paste the only part left is to put salted and squeezed cabbage in here and it's finished <laughs> So make sure you have gloves so that your okay. hands don't get too spicy. So this is our sauce. We're substituting green onion for the Korean chives. That smells so good already. <laughs> it smells really good. You guys, if you're someone who washes your dishes or is about to make kimchi, this is the only kind of glove you should buy. It's mami son. This is like what my mommy <laughs> what my mom has always used i've always seen her use these and when i ever have tried to find gloves just at an american grocery store there is no comparison this is the only one that is worth it but yeah get these That's some og mommy son right there the og mommy son <laughs> we're gloved and ready for surgery <laughs> so we just put it in and start massaging it right that's right Yeah. It does look really good. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think I would ever necessarily make kimchi from scratch. But you did it, and it- Yeah, it wasn't that bad. It was like pretty straightforward, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Taste it. Taste, Taste it? it? Okay, okay. If it's, you know, to your liking. Mmm. Oh. That's so good. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, you just made really it down! Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be itching to eat this as soon as I possibly can in a couple days. You know it's really good kimchi, whether it's this kind or radish kimchi, kakduki, whatever it is. If it tastes good as soon as you make it, before it has to ferment. That's how I feel like I know it's going to be amazing once it's fermented. Yes. Yeah. Come here. You have to try it on camera. Dang. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's so good. Yeah. That looks beautiful. Now we just put it in a container, right? After you put it in the container, make sure you burp every morning. Oh, because let it out so the gas comes out. Mm. So you want to leave it on the countertop for two days. Let it burp every morning. Like just say good morning, good night. <laughs> After two days, you can then put it into the fridge and then still ferment in the fridge for about two weeks. So that is a perfect to eat. However, you want to make sure you save a little bit for today <laughs> and then put some sesame seeds on top. And then you can have it as panchan today. Yeah. Like salad, you know? My mother does it all the time. And even though I didn't write it in the book, I like to put some sesame seeds on top. Instead of salt bay, you're sesame. I'm a sesame bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. A lot of like difficult part is waiting. It's a little bit of like an art than science. So once you can kind of accept that, then everything is done. So I guess that is it for all of our kimchi. I'm so excited. It already tastes so good. You guys let me know if you end up making it. If you want to see us do another Korean recipe, let me know what you'd like to see in the comments down below. Hit the thumbs up button. Thank you so much, Suni Onni, for guys guiding us through this. We could not have done this without you. And even if we tried, it would not be the same. You guys have to follow her on Instagram. Her name is Korean Fusion. Seriously, it's just the recipes are so beyond good. So if you're into Korean food, buy her cookbook. Buy her cookbook. I'll link it in the info box down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Mwah.